My name is Falco Bussi. I'm the president of Booker Biospin, which is uh, one of the major groups in the Booker Corporation. So NMR, in my view, has two major roles to play. Uh, the one is more the current role already in which NMR has in drug discovery, which means identifying new targets uh, for drugs and then also uh, supporting the development process of new drugs and even the manufacturing and quality control of drugs. That one is an established role for NMR already. Then there's a new one as well, which is um, linking uh, metabolic information from our blood or other body fluids to lifestyle and also to genetic profiles to find out why COVID-19 is so different in different individuals, um, what determines mortality, and what kind of lifestyle changes might actually impact the disease. So that's called um, phenomics, um, and uh, that's something where NMR plays a key role as well. My name is Harald Schwalbe. You're right now at the Biocenter in Frankfurt, Campus Riedberg, at the large-scale NMR center called BMRZ. NMR is a spectroscopy that can be used to visualize atoms in biomolecular targets. Proteins are made out of atoms. This is probably 10,000 atoms. And NMR can now determine where this small molecule, which is a drug, binds to this protein in a very specific manner because we look at the spectroscopic fingerprint of each and every of these proteins that is made out of 10,000 atoms. One of the things in combating COVID-19 is to do repurposing of drugs. Let's see whether these uh, old drugs can be repurposed against COVID-19 proteins. However, this is too short of a stretch because if old drugs would actually work, we would just take the old drugs and we would have combated COVID. So we also have to look for new drugs. And this is one of the specific aspects of our project to actually identify also new drugs. So if we look at the drug development process, uh, we have um, the systems that are really uh, used in the early phase, so the drug discovery, which is then the larger systems that look at what are the right targets, what are the right uh, ingredients that can actually bind to these targets. Um, so doing this kind of screening. And then we also have a whole portfolio of smaller systems on the bench top that can be used then later on to when, when the um, active components are synthesized to see if we have made the right substances, even then um, in the, in the uh, manufacturing process for the quality control. So that's a portfolio of NMR systems we have already uh, for some time. Now the virus has a RNA of some 30,000 nucleotides, and these RNA encodes for roughly 30 proteins. And so what we do in COVID-19 NMR is to determine all structures of all RNAs within the virus and of all proteins within the virus. And this information helps us to design drugs against proteins or RNA. So we actually conduct by NMR massive screening of libraries to identify where small molecules bind the viral proteins or viral RNAs. We are in very good contact with our colleagues at Puka, and uh, Puka has also offered measurement time uh, for some of the proteins. Uh, and we get support in, in maintenance of our spectrometers. So we engaged very early um, in these large uh, research networks. Sometimes we even initiate them. We are not leading the network, but we are supporting these networks very actively. Like the COVID-19 NMR project of Professor Schwalbe, um, where we supply equipment at very low prices. We give software for the analysis, and we even offered that some of the measurements can happen in our own facility. So that's one uh, of these large projects we are supporting. So our platform is a web page and, and we also are active in Twitter. On the web page we invite people to send us an email whether they want to participate and we have more than 30 groups worldwide that join. And uh, then we actually ask what kind of research are you interested at? Um, and then we share the tasks. So 
the uh, so the entrance uh, ticket you have to write on the right is you share your data, you share your plasmids, you share your proteins, you share everything immediately. So we have the common task to do meaningful research against COVID-19 and uh, we can do that. I have um, witnessed, uh, you know, impressive collegiality. I have very good colleagues worldwide and they all do that. Uh, and, you know, sometimes it needs this crisis to actually project the very best out of scientific communities. For us, the only thing for sure right now is that there is nothing for sure. So we are, of course, uh, trying to plan ahead, but at some point in time, we think there will be something like a new normal. And until then, we will navigate to this uh, point. But I think it's fair to say that the new normal will not be the same as it was a few months ago. Um, and that means in the new normal, in my view, um, a lot of these things we have implemented right now, the digital, let's say, channels that we have developed into our systems, but also to our customers, to our partners, they will remain. So they will still be there. Um, I expect then still that human interaction will take place and will be important, but it will be complemented by a digital channel at the same time. So that's for scientific conferences, that's for education and learning, that's for collaborations. Um, and that also means that the tools that we provide, both the hardware, but also the software needs to support that. And that's something that we can actually work on and we do work on to prepare ourselves for the new normal.